Quantitative data analysis is an essential component of most methods in qualitative research, such as thematic analysis, grounded theory or content analysis. Unfortunately, qualitative data analysis is extremely labor intensive. For example, interview transcripts sometimes need to be analyzed sentence by sentence. Wouldn't this be a task where you could wonderfully get support from ChatGPT? Let's find out. And now, without further ado, welcome to Schreibe. Qualitative data analysis can be used to summarize or structure large amounts of qualitative data. For example, interview transcripts, documents or social media postings. Summarizing means abstracting the content by forming categories, a process also known as coding. You assign a label to small units of analysis, such as an answer to an interview question, and can thus present hundreds of pages of text in a single category system later. Summarizing also means that you don't know in advance what categories will emerge. This approach follows an inductive logic from specific, meaning the data, to general, meaning the categories. Structuring means assigning the content to predefined categories. These categories can, for example, be derived from the literature. This results in a so-called codebook that specifies when an analytical unit corresponds to a certain category. Both tasks, structuring and summarizing, can be extremely labor-intensive and repetitive. That means they are tailor-made for artificial intelligence or even better, for a large language model like GPT. So, how can we best integrate ChatGPT into the qualitative data analysis process? In the following, we will look at seven steps to turn ChatGPT into your personal research assistant. The following steps are loosely based on the working paper by Zhang and colleagues from Penn State University, where the authors summarized the best practices in prompt engineering from 17 qualitative researchers. In case you didn't know, prompt engineering refers to crafting the instructions you give to ChatGPT and other large language models. Step 1. Start your prompt with a role play. Several experiments with ChatGPT have shown that assigning a role can significantly improve the quality of results. Let's look at an example. In our case, ChatGPT is supposed to conduct a thematic analysis with interview data that we have collected. So think of a role that fits this context. For example, Imagine you are a researcher and an expert in the analysis of qualitative data, such as interview transcripts. Step 2. Provide ChatGPT with context. To perform a qualitative data analysis with ChatGPT, a two-line instruction won't get you very far. You need to formulate your prompt as detailed as possible to get the best results. Just imagine you're talking to someone who's very intelligent but is doing the task for the first time. For our thematic analysis example, it could look like this. I will provide you with an interview transcript that you should analyze using a method called thematic analysis. Your task is to assign categories to the answers in the transcript. A category is an abstract summary of the content. You should not assign categories to the questions themselves. Step 3. Give ChatGPT a detailed description of your qualitative method. The prompt should describe as precisely as possible what the goal of the task is. This also includes aligning the prompt with the specific goal you have in mind. Let's say your interviews are about the topic of remote work and stress. Then you should formulate your prompt accordingly. Always keep in mind that ChatGPT only knows as much about the task as the information you provide to it. The interview transcripts focus on the topic of remote work. Specifically, 
The categories you create based on the answers should relate to how remote workers experience stress and what countermeasures they take in this context. The level of detail here cannot be too high. It's important not to rush and take your time when composing the prompt. Step 4. Specify how results should look like. If you're working with predefined categories or a codebook, now is the time to explain to ChatGPT into which categories the data should be classified. You can also include a complete codebook if you like. However, for our example, we'll continue with an inductive analysis, which means that we develop the categories from scratch. Here we want ChatGPT to keep the categories from being too abstract. I would recommend using the AI only for the labor-intensive tasks, which typically is the first round of coding. This step is often referred to as open coding. Later, when we develop more theoretical codes or themes, we involve our brain a bit more and use our creativity. For the open coding, we want ChatGPT to give us some examples from the data that represent these categories well. Don't give me more than 10 categories for the first three transcripts and for each category, find a text example of at least three sentences that best reflects the category. Step five, structure your data. ChatGPT delivers better results when you structure the transcripts. That means not just copying and pasting, but making sure the format of question and answer is consistent. Spelling errors or punctuation do not affect ChatGPT's performance. The easiest way to explain the structure of the transcripts is as follows. The transcripts are structured like this. Interviewer indicated by the abbreviation I, followed by a question ending with a question mark. Participant is indicated by the abbreviation P, followed by an answer. Step 6. Define the format of the results. To make it easier for you to process the results and continue to work with them, consider how ChatGPT should present them to you. A table would be a good idea in most cases. You could integrate it into your prompt like this. Please present the results in table form. The first column contains the categories. The second column contains a description of the categories, at least three sentences. The third column contains the example quote and the last column contains the number of participants who mentioned the topic. Now before we get to step 7, please consider to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this type of content. Step 7. Adjust as needed. After you've entered your monster prompt and fed ChatGPT with the transcripts, you can still make adjustments as necessary. If you feel like the 10 categories are too few, you can ask for more. If you think there are too many, you can instruct ChatGPT to prioritize the categories. For example, reduce the categories to 8 and arrange the table so that the categories mentioned by the most participants are listed first. You can then transfer the output table to Excel, for example, and continue working with it. Now for the last part of this tutorial, let me mention a few things to keep in mind. Are you convinced by the results? That's great, but hold on a second. You should be aware of some important limitations of ChatGPT when it comes to qualitative data analysis. First, transparency. It's often challenging to understand how ChatGPT has formed the categories. The authors of the working paper I mentioned found in their tests that two additional instructions not only improve the results, but also enhance transparency. Analyze the transcripts sentence by sentence. With this simple instruction, you prompt ChatGPT to analyze the transcripts from beginning to end, just as you would do manually. This makes it less likely that the AI skips or neglects parts of the data. So be sure to include this short sentence. Another recommendation is to include the following. 
Provide a brief explanation for each category, explaining how you arrived at the category. ChatGPT will then provide a description of how the categories relate to the data, making it easier for you to understand how the categories were generated. 2. ChatGPT can get tired. The AI is a black box, meaning we can't see what's happening under the hood. If you overburden ChatGPT with many different instructions for an extended period, the quality of results may decline. The AI is likely to improve over time and differences between the pro and the free versions may exist, among some other factors. What you should do at this point in time is create the entire prompt as best as possible and then let ChatGPT process it only once or make only minor adjustments afterwards. 3. Reliability Experiments in which the API of ChatGPT is queried with the same prompts multiple times show that the results are slightly different each time. This is also known as the temperature of the large language model. The higher the temperature, the more varied the results. As an average user, you rely on the default settings, where the temperature is not too high. However, what you can and should do is perform a manual reliability check, just as you would when coding with another person. If you're wondering why I'm not discussing research ethics and plagiarism in this video, simply check out my ChatGPT plagiarism video that is linked right here. In this video, I cover everything you need to know about how to use ChatGPT correctly as a tool for your academic projects.